All right, VC. Uh, gonna kick this one off. Um, been out here in Montana near Big Sky skiing. I've got a few ski videos of my family and I myself. Nothing extravagant, I'll say. Nothing that qualifies for like a national championship or even a regional championship or even anything. <laughs> but uh, we're having a nice time. And uh, so I'll put a couple of those videos up and then I've got some vinyl finds. Stay tuned. Right now, out here on the deck doing the Sunday New York Times crossword from, I don't know, two, three weeks ago and having my stogie. So life could be worse. Stay tuned. All right, we're here on the chairlift. Here's my bride, Susan, and son, Jackson. Today is actually Susan's 66th birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, Jackson, do you have any thoughts Say you hi. want to add for, Say the, hi over here. for the video audience of vinyl collectors watching this? Happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> ah, that's a nice sentiment. More to follow. ABC, it's Dr. Robert here. Uh, I'm out in Montana with my lovely wife, Susan, and we're staying with some friends of ours uh, near Big Sky, Montana, at a ski resort called the Yellowstone Club. I'm sure a number of you have heard of it. I, I was unaware of it, but very uh, elegant and uh, lovely uh, ski resort, and we've been enjoying our time here. But uh, was also able to make a trip into Bozeman, Montana. Uh, yesterday, it's about an hour and a 15 minute drive and visited a couple of record stores. Uh, one's called uh, the Wax Museum. Uh, the other was called Cactus Records, two stores. And I really, you know, I don't make many of these videos about, oh, look what I found. But I found some really unusual things that I didn't know much about, uh, some. Uh, some I didn't know much about, others I did, but some very unusual finds uh, in the college town of Bozeman, Montana. So I'll intersperse some video of, uh, of what the skiing looks like a little bit uh, through this, but uh, go ahead and get started here. This is a really interesting record by a British band I had not known of previously called Killing Floor. They are a... Um, uh, one of the late 60s British blues bands like uh, Fleetwood Mac was and uh, the Groundhogs and uh, Chicken Shack, all of those uh, bands, as well as probably want to include the Rolling Stones on that and the Animals and certainly the Yardbirds. But these guys are quite notorious and they really, back in the day, put out only two records. They've put out a number, uh, they've gotten back together and put out some more since. This is the first of their records, and there's a U.S. pressing. They really are quite rare uh, per Discogs, so that was really quite a find. This is another uh, record I didn't know of. These are uh, two, two members of um, uh, Deep Purple, uh, Tony Ashton and John Lord, and this one isn't yet opened. It's still in the shrink wrap. This is from the early 70s, like 1972, it's uh, 74. It's on Warner Brothers in the United States, but uh, it was one of the first solo albums by members of um, of Deep Purple and found that on sale for only $12. I thought that was quite reasonable. I love this woman's records, uh, Betty LeVette. Um, this is one of her later her records, 2007, this came out, The Scene of the Crime. This is interesting because it was recorded uh, at Muscle Shoals and uh, was kind of a return to Muscle Shoals uh, recording studio for both her and the producers of, of the record. Uh, this was only $15 and, and uh, again, a very nice find record. I 
didn't own and I think had not uh, previously been aware of. This guy, I'm only starting to make a dent on. This is the second record I have by him. The other one is part of the rock and roll series that uh, Atlantic put out that included Big Joe Turner and Ray Charles and a few other early uh, performers on their label. Uh, this is on the MGM label and just in stunning condition, the original MGM yellow label. Uh, $10 for this. So I thought that was just quite reasonable. The cover is also in, I would call it, very close to near mint shape. Um, maybe one dented corner, I'll probably call it VG Plus, but so close to near mint. And it has the dust proof hype sticker here on the, on the cover itself. I always didn't like that. Here's a recent J.J. Kale record. Uh, this has um, Eric Clapton on one song here. Uh, and it's again a fairly recent record. This one was 2009, recent by my standards. I know for Mazzy, you know, that's like back in the day. Uh, but uh, none of these are RSD pressings or, um, you know, high quality repressings. These are all original, the original pressings. That's what I tend to migrate towards. And this one was uh, 20 bucks for that. I thought that was really a very reasonable price. Um, here's another one. This is an original pressing of uh, um, the Black Crows album, uh, War Paint from 2007 also, one I did not own. This one was a little costly. I had to pay $40 for that, but I would say that it's worth that uh, in, in my humble opinion. So I'm gonna enjoy that. And here's one, I wanted to put this in here. I didn't know this band, I still don't know this band, Pujol. And um, this is a record once in a while, I, you know, I do buy things without knowing anything about the performers. And this one, what drew me in is that this was recorded live at Third Man Records, Jack White's record uh, label and record pr pressing plant uh, uh, out in Nashville at the time. I think they now have maybe a, an outlet in Minneapolis as well. I'm not 100% sure. Somebody can tell me in the comments if you'd like to. Um, but uh, perfect shape. This one was only $4. So, and it's not a full LP. It's an EP, three songs per side. But uh, 2010, Third Man Records. Uh, I thought that was worth a chance. On, and, and largely, again, because uh, I trust that record label. Uh, and then here, I saved the best for last, I think. This is a really uh, fascinating record. This is a test pressing. I found this at the Wax Museum. $50 for this. It's a double album of the Little Feet Waiting for Columbus. And it's not from the original pressing. It's from the 2010 repressing on uh, the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab label. So... I enjoy getting test pressings. I buy those when I see them, uh, typically, if, I, if they're in good shape and reasonably priced. Um, I, you know, I, again, there's some quality issue. There's obviously a rarity issue. Uh, and um, uh, I, I like having those records. So um, to find one from the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab uh, pressing for Waiting for Columbus, uh, I pulled the trigger for $50, and it's it's... Uh, they don't have, of course, the test pressing listed on Discogs, or they oftentimes do not. Once in a while they do, but most records don't have that listed. I, I probably aren't. I'm not going to post this up on Discogs, but the um, the price of just the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab limited pressing from 2010 is over 200 bucks uh, there. So I think that was really quite a fair price. So some kind of interesting records. I bought a few more that I'm not going to you know, stick in here, just that are probably, I think, a little less interesting. Some other 4 and $5 albums. Uh, so I just highly recommend Billings, Montana. Uh, turns out to be a good record destination. And I'll finish this segment with a little, uh, a little view of off the deck here. And I think it's about time for a stogie and a glass of whiskey. Until next time, the doctor is out.